this habitat is a breath of fresh air when you, you come out and you just get the smell of the marsh. So you get out here and then you see these tree lines and these low-lying shrubs, you know, for miles in some places. Just untouched, undeveloped habitat that is just absolutely beautiful. Okay. Let's rock and roll. But there's this nice expansive piece of kind of like untouched habitat just on the other side of the beach. And we found that it's, a, it's an absolute gold mine for these animals. A lot of people would see the spot and say, oh, there's no real wildlife or, or like, like turtles here. If you just looked at it like on a map or just driving the neighborhood. Turtles are one of the most at risk groups of animals on the planet right now. Turtles are especially sensitive to climate change because they have what's called temperature sex determination. Turtles are at risk because of habitat destruction and fragmentation. These turtles are that we're specifically studying are very popular in the pet trade. So they face pressures from poaching and over collection for the pet trade illegally. Turtles are facing issues from all angles and you can trace it back to humans pretty much every time. Being able to come out and assess the status of a population to understand and how many turtles there are out here, how many are actively reproducing, um, how many juveniles we're finding, all sorts of things like that can only help us sort of elucidate uh, how they're trending, how they're doing. Actually, what we're doing right now is we are tracking some individual animals that have radio transmitters attached to their shells. So each animal has a specific channel that aligns with it. Um, and we'll respond to um, our receiver that we have over here that Jackie is actively tracking with right now. Do with a beeping sound. Um, so the closer we get to the animal, the louder the beep is going to be. And that's going to allow us to assess their home range and their movements and sort of the micro habitats that they're using in this general area. Get an advanced version of Marco Polo. So the closer we get to the turtle, the louder the beep is. So we know how close we are. But of this habitat specifically, we're seeing them make a lot of use of water. He's probably a good four inches underwater, kind of resting on top of things. This is number 139. This is actually one of my first is tracking a turtle that's completely submerged. Um, I've joined along with a fellow uh, classmate of mine while he tracked them, but this is a first for me today, so I'm glad this is our first one. It was really interesting. So what we'll do now is we're gonna get uh, just some general data on where we found them. We get temperature, we kind of uh, look at the, the vegetation that's around, we kind of describe the habitat that we found them in. So um, the most rewarding part is definitely, I would say, finding that new turtle. Um, seeing them, that rush you get of, is it what I think it is? It is, here we go. And that feeling is definitely cool because not only are you finding a super cute little animal, but you're also knowing and finding evidence of a healthy population and that they still are surviving and thriving and making more of themselves for future generations. Number is going to correspond to some coding um, and this is gonna be number 167, I think, for our coding system. Because of how pretty they are, they're super beautiful turtles, so we keep them kind of secret here because uh, there's a huge poaching event um, back in October where FWC busted a guy that had over 4,000 turtles sitting in his house over in Lee County. We don't want anybody <laughs> knowing that they could come out here and pluck them. That's the key. I think 135 for men. 20.4. So when we're doing this marking, um, we're basically just going through a layer of that keratin. It's kind of just like filing your fingernails or even just trimming your hair. So there's not, not a lot of pain or anything. They, they can obviously feel like the motion. So it's probably a little irritating, but it's not a painful process at all. And you said it's pretty much so you can code, right? It's, it's exactly for coding so we can understand each individual. So now we have this one marked as 167. So if we find it in like a couple months time in a different spot, we say, oh, it's moved over there. And that's also gonna allow us to estimate how many individuals actually use this habitat when we put this into some statistical analyses. When I, when I see these students out here, in the field, getting dirty, finding 
these turtles out here participating in research. Like it just, it's kind of like they're my own kids. I get giddy inside, you know, it's like, oh. It's so awesome to see students getting that unique experience and participating in research at what, you know, a lot of folks consider like a state or community college, you know, that you don't really see these kind of programs very often. Uh, when I saw the opportunity to come out here and work with Professor and the other students, I, I like jumped right on it. I don't know, it all feels worth it. You know, when you find a turtle, uh, when you start collecting data, uh, at the end of the day, it's like just very fulfilling. Oh, perfect. Yep, that's him. Uh, when I first started at FSW, I didn't really have an idea as far as what I wanted to do um, with a degree or like with a career. Uh, and then when I took this course and I started doing this work, it made me realize this is something I want to do for the rest of my life. So. It was like a dream come true for me to be working out here. Pairing my love with nature with the love of science has definitely made it really cool. But with this, being in community college, um, definitely surprising and really rewarding to be able to have this experience early on. These students are going to be able to leave here knowing how to use radio telemetry equipment knowing how to do basic uh, wildlife surveys and measurements, which are key prerequisites for any entry-level wildlife job that they could enter. So they will actually have skills that a lot of people in four-year universities won't have coming out of school. So to be able to have this program and to get students learning skills that will not only benefit the project here, but also their future careers, is absolutely outstanding. <laughs>